uh, I think everybody was looking for a wire game, and, and so was I. We kind of had that feel at halftime, but um, you know, I just thought we played really good, efficient basketball. You know, we, when the transition buckets were available, we took them, and uh, you know, we spread the floor out down the stretch with a comfortable lead, and for the most part held on to the ball and made our free throws and, and do it the way you're supposed to do it to win basketball games. But, I mean, Fairmont State is uh, obviously a very, very good basketball team. And, you know, their program is, uh, is, is right now, they're sky high. Um, for us to take them out you know, by a 14-point win is surprising. It, it really surprises me, but that's a tribute to these guys right here. How was it uh, handling, uh, this question is <coughs> handling the post inside against those guys? Um, obviously, their size. You guys have dealt with that all year, but when you played them three times, but just talk to me a little bit about dealing with their. Well, we knew they were going to be big and physical. Um, Coach has been stressing that to us all week. Like, every time we play them, prepare for them, they're always going to be big and physical. So our job, and then he told us we just had to outwork them. So we knew coming in that we just had to, you know, fight for fight for position and just outwork them and try to out hustle them to get the balls. So. Alex, what changed for you guys in the second half? I don't really think we changed anything, and I don't know if they changed anything. I think just the progressiveness of the game. I think I think about six minutes ago, you could tell we got the eight-point lead, and you could tell they were kind of a little bit winded, and we were getting some transition buckets on them. And, um, we let them back in towards the end of the second half. I mean, end of the first half, um, contributing to them. But then the second half, I mean, it was just it's a game of longevity, and that's that's the way we play. Up tempo for 40 minutes, and eventually it kind of warned them a little bit. Their defense kind of stopped. I mean, they have a great defense, great pressure defense, and you could tell it kind of wore down just a little bit towards the end of the game, and I think that was key. Hey, Alex, what's you guys' key in rebounding? And Coach Calhoun mentioned uh, you guys out-rebounded them. It's just, and you got, and if you look on paper, you guys have no business out-rebounding anybody. Yeah, I, um, towards the end of this year, I mean, every game we've done very well rebounding. That's definitely key. Um, I feel like um, we... Rebounding for us is a lot of hard work and a lot of positioning. Coach Gutfried always mentions getting that extra foot of space before the guy. In that case, it really doesn't matter how big you are. If you have that extra space, they have to climb over you if they want to get the rebound. And that's the part where hard work really comes in. And you can tell today that our bigs and guards really worked hard on getting the rebounds because that's it was key to the game. It was really key. For the players, uh, did it factor in at all that this was the last WVIC tournament game that you guys would ever play in? Um, it's uh, it's special. It's special. I mean, it's been a 76-year-long tournament. I mean, it's a great tournament every year. The past four years I've been here, and it's really important to people. I mean, it's a really big thing to win it, and it definitely. It, I think it factored in. I mean, we both we had the same motivation, but it being the last year, I mean, it, I think it's really special to end up on top. How did you know 76 years? There's signs. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, without uh, without Cedric um, in the game today, I guess uh, did you did you feel like that gave you know Fairmont an extra edge or of some sort of maybe over you guys that you know obviously a playmaker like him wouldn't be in the lineup. I mean, that is a fact. You, you can't you can't negate that. You know, he's averaging 18 points a game. And, Shooting a high percentage from the floor, he's leading the team in assists, and he's probably our best on-ball defender. And um, you know, it, it's a factor. But honestly, we really have guys that seem to be able to step up. You know, and, and we've really worked hard to not be about so much individual players as about a system. And that's what it comes to. You know, Cedric Harris is a guy that, that works really hard. And, and right now, you know, he was just a guy on the bench, just cheering like crazy for his teammates because he's part of a team. And I appreciate the fact that he does that. There's guys on our team that are pretty good players that didn't get to play today. And they do the same thing. They just cheer like crazy. And I actually attribute that to be one of the reasons why, without him here, we're still an effective basketball team. Because we're a team. And Coach Calhoun was obviously able to make a quick fix out of a team that was miserable last year. Um, I guess, you know, speak to the way he's been able to really build that program. You know, I mean, Put good basketball players on the floor, which he has. You know, somewhere he's gone out and he's, he's found some good basketball players. And, and you put good basketball players on the floor and, and make them play hard and you have success. And that's what they've done. And, you know, he, he regrouped with a, a really good all conference player, you know, Isaac Ford. And, and uh, from a lot of different sources, you know, Division I transfer Malik Stiff and uh, Mountain State folds up and they 
got an All-American that, that rolls into Fairmont. And uh, you have the junior college player that signed that Brendan Cooper was going to go to St. Bonaventure. Things fell through there. And, uh, and you think, well, geez, he's just lucky to get players. And, you know, it's about hard work. That's how you get players. It's hard work. They're out beating the bushes. And they got him. And then his job was to make them play together. And they did a good job of that. They've had a great year. Jim, your kids aren't very emotional. You think that you know, they'll show it. They'll get worked up. Um, you think that's because of the way you are? Yeah, absolutely. You know, they're they're very coachable and they, they follow the lead here. And you know, I, even the emotions that I have. I mean, for me, you know, this is this is the last tournament for these guys. They've been in the conference for four years and two years. But um, you know, I, I grew up in West Virginia. And, uh, when I was eight years old, I was just telling Barry Blizzard, he's, he's done a great job here as our commissioner. I was just telling Barry, when I was eight years old, I remember my dad taking me to, to watch Morris Harvey play and introduced me to Sonny Moran and George King. And he came back from World War II and, and finished at Morris Harvey and, and knew those guys. And, uh, so I was watching the conference then. I was, when I was in junior high, I remember listening to Fairmont State play in the NAI National Tournament. And I was in, listening to my little transistor radio in my room and started losing the connection in my my mom said, well, you know, we got better in the car radio. So I threw on a jacket and ran out to my driveway and jumped in the car <coughs> and listened to Dave Cooper and James and those guys play in the NAI National Tournament at Kansas City when I was in junior high. And, you know, to be a part of this, Danny, the last few years of the championship. And, you know, I coached tennis up on the hill up there at the Players Club for 15 years and enjoyed that. So, yeah, I have probably a deeper feel for this conference, the West Virginia Conference, than the average guy. So it means a lot more to me, and I think that – but, you know, that's something that I don't talk to these guys too much about. You know, they're, they're business. They play really hard. I like that about them. You know, they're, I think our success is keen on the fact that we have to play harder than everybody else. These guys know that. Um, you think that emotion ties into that. But sometimes if you only do it when you're emotional, it comes in spurts. These guys do it all the time, and that's business. Alex, as a senior, what does this mean? What does this win mean to you? It means a great deal, I mean. Coming to the year, I knew we were going to have a great year, but the league is really tough this year, and winning the games we won this year, the regular season was great, but conference tournament's always different. I mean, you're going to get the best of everybody. It's only one game, and you're done. And we had some really great teams, really great and tough games, and it, it definitely means a lot to win this. I mean, for me and my team, I mean, I love, I love my team, and they really, we pick each other up when we're down. I think that was key to winning these conference championships this year. Hey, Jim. Did you give Fairmont State the first for a first place vote in the first year as conference coach? I would never vote for my myself for that, so you figure it out from there. Okay. <laughs> There's your nugget for the day. <laughs> I, I didn't think you would, but I didn't know. I thought you, you'd be crazy to do it that way. After um, winning 30 games and go, go, have an 18 I've start. never voted for myself in first place. I've wore the same top pin for 250 games. A lot of things, those preseason <laughs> polls, they're not worth anything. No. We're going to play the season anyway. Absolutely. Just, you can put down anything. So I, I've never voted for us. I thought, well, we've done pretty well. I'm voting for someone else. So that's kind of how that goes. Ah, and, uh, it doesn't mean anything because I know for sure we're going to play the season. <laughs> really you know, it didn't happen. mean anything to me either. I was just <laughs> eating at me. Yeah. <laughs> but I can tell. It never crossed your mind, hardly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with one one note that I think is if there's a story here with this team on the side, you know, we got three guys here, and, and Alex being the leader of the pack with he and Timmy Osfeld and Chris Morrow that have won an astronomical number of basketball games in their career. I think at Kentucky Wesleyan, it was a four-year span where guys actually won, someone told me, 127 games and done the research. But outside of that, I don't know if there's anybody on that team that played all four years, but these guys have played four years, and they've won over 120 games in four years, which outside of maybe that one group, maybe there was someone at Kentucky Wesleyan that had done that. No one else has done that in the history division, too. These are the winningest players right here, these three guys that I've ever seen in college basketball. You go back to the old days of UCLA and Lou Alcindor, and, uh, to find guys that won that many games in their career. And there's a reason why they win, and it's the type of players they are. Coach Calhoun was saying that one thing nobody talks about with you guys is the way you're able to rebound. Um, I guess, how much do you guys actually